Hello year one, it is week three. Welcome to a new week of learning. It's Monday today, so we're going to get our comprehension literacy books ready and we're going to start working with the reception one, okay? Now we started looking at sounds on Friday in our reception booklet and today's sound, ooh, I'm going to write it down, let's see if you know, okay? Is the sound Ah! Okay. Who can remember our song for Ah? I'll give you a clue. Here's our action. Well, I think you know. Sing along with me. Ah, ah, ants on my arm. Ah, ah, ants on my arm. Ah, ah, ants on my arm. They're causing me alarm. Super. So sing that with your adult. You could even teach your adult that song at home. I'm sure they would love to hear you sing that. So for today's activity, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the letter A and it makes the sound A. Ah. And you can see here, you've got some different activities on your page all about the sound A, ah, the letter A, okay? So you've got some objects that begin with the sound ah you've got to find the sound ah so do some identifying and we're going to have a go about writing our sound ah our letter a okay so what i would like you to do for your first activity is get your whiteboard and if your adult has got a ruler at home then i want you to draw a line because when we're practicing our letters, it's really important that we write them on the line so they're not floating in the air. So draw a line. If you haven't got a ruler, a little sneaky tip from Miss James is to use the edge of your book and make a straight line to start with. So come with me then and let's draw our sound A or A. So we're going to start on the line, up and over, stop there, curve it round, up and down and a lift flick okay so let's do it again up and over stop there curl it round up and down and a little flick now can you see how my ah sounds look the same they are on the line and I start on the line look here and I end on the line with a little flick now my ah doesn't do this It's not a roller coaster. We don't need a big tail. We just need a little flick at the end. So I want you to have a really good practice of your app today, okay? Remember, practice makes perfect when it comes to handwriting. And your second challenge. Once you've completed your workbook activities, I would like you to find me some things in your house that have the ah sound in them. So they might begin with the sound ah, or they might have it in the middle. For example, a h at hat. Can you find me a h at? And then, once you've found some different items, I would like you to write me a list. So once you've found them, and your adult has taken a picture of your board, you can get your ruler, if you've got one, you're going to write me a list. So this time you might need more than one line. And I'm going to write H A T. And I'm going to put a circle around my sound of the day A. Ah. So when you write your list, I would like to see that you know where your A ah sound is, where you know where the letter A ah or is okay so lots of little challenges there for you today if you've got the reception booklet and I'd love to see your photos of your work okay so off you go moving on then to the year one comprehension booklet so today you're working on page number 12 and we've got a lovely picture here and it's a picture of some children on a bus have a little look with me now the really, really important thing, remember, when we talk about comprehension, it's all about our reading and what we are understanding about our reading. So, our question says, colour the picture so it matches the text. And we've got one, 
two, three, four sentences, okay? And in these sentences, you will see there are key words. And those words are going to be colours because it will tell you what colour you need to colour in the object. So let's do the first one together. Oh, this is our tricky word. What tricky word is it? The. The. Ch. Ildr. N. Ch. Ildr. The children are, another tricky word, the children are, oh, this is going to be tricky, r i d ing. Now, would I say r i d ing? I wouldn't, would I? I would say r i d ing. The children are riding on, on a red, red. Oh, I know, there's my, there's my colour. So I'm going to circle that word because that word is some key information for us. I know now that I need to colour whatever object it's asking me in red. So go back and read it again. The children are riding on a red bus. Bus. Buzz. So that's another piece of key information. So I know that I've got to colour the bus in red, okay? So it's giving me key information to help me colour in my picture. So what I don't want today is for, for your adult to read you the sentence because this whole activity is about you reading, having a really good go and understanding what you've got to do, okay, year one? Once you've done that, and remember, colouring should take quite a long time because you're going to stay in the lines, you're going to do it really neatly and that will help with your pencil control as well. I don't want to see scribble, I want to see a lovely beautiful picture. Once you've done that today, I would then like you to draw your own picture, okay, it could be of our school. And you're going to write me some sentences about what colours I need for different things, okay. So for example, the roof is black. So if you drew a picture of Sandin, we know that our roof is black. So you could write me the sentence, the roof is black. What else do we know about Sandin? Oh, what about the playground? Have a good go. The playground is green. There's lots of our new green grass isn't there on the playground. So you could have a go at writing some sentences about your picture, okay? So have a good go with that today. Don't forget to send your pictures in. And then the last one is your comprehension book for year two. Okay, so if you've got a year two booklet today, we're working on page 12. And today we've got a poem. And can you remember, we had a poetry day, didn't we? Not long ago. And we had to look at different styles of poem and we wrote our own. And we will see here, that in our poem we've got some rhyming words, okay? And that's called a rhyming couplet. So if you've got two sentences and at the end of each sentence the words rhyme, they are called a rhyming couplet. So there's your learning of the day. So let's have a look then at the poem together. And our poem is by Tony Mitten and this person here, he's the author, so he's the one who wrote the poem. The poem says, don't be so glum plum, don't feel beaten. You were made to be eaten. And look there, we've got the same end sound. There's our rhyme. But don't you know that deep within, beneath your juicy flesh and flimsy skin, again, look at those end sounds. You bear a mystery, you hold the key, you have the making of a whole new tree. What a lovely poem, I wonder what? The end sentence could be about you have the making of a whole new tree. Have a think about that. See if you can maybe write in your answers what you think, how the new tree will be made. So you've got four questions today. And remember, as always in our comprehension booklet, it's all about reading the text and circling, finding the key information we need. Also, when you're reading questions in your comprehension, it's about 
the first word, so R W words, what, which, and that will help us think about what the question is asking us to do. So let's do number one together. What does the word glum mean? And we've got to put a circle around our answer. So straight away, I know I'm looking for a word. What word am I looking for? Glum. So let's find it in the text. It's here. Glum. And I'm going to put a circle around that. And I know that I'm going to read this little section here to see if it can help me answer what does the word glum mean. Don't be so glum plum. Don't feel beaten. Oh, I know if, if you feel beaten, you might feel sad. So let's have a look here and see if we can find another word for sad. Excited. Mm, that means happy, so I know that's not going to mean sad. Unhappy. Unhappy. So unhappy is the opposite of happy. So I know that the opposite of happy is sad. So I found my answer. Glum means unhappy because the plum feels glum because he thinks he's going to be eaten and he doesn't feel like he wants to be. So there's my answer. Okay, so it's using the text and thinking really carefully about what words might mean. So you've got three other questions there to answer now today. Okay, and you've got some thinking about different words and their meaning. So have a good go. And then at the end, you've got to copy your favourite line. And I love these kind of questions. Explain why you like it. So remember, an explanation of about why you like it is about you, what you think. So find your favourite line and tell me what you think. Why do you like that line so much? Okay? So, a really nice activity there for you today, year two. And maybe you could find some other poems, either online or you might have a poetry book at home. You can have a little look through and see if you can see any similarities in this poem to the one that you might read. Have a good go. So we're going to end our literacy then today with a story as always. And today's story is called I Want a Friend by Tony Ross. Are you ready? He doesn't want to play with me, wailed the little princess. He only does boys stuff. Oh dear, she's got a very red face, hasn't she? She's a little bit angry, I think. Never mind, said the Queen. You start school tomorrow. You'll have lots of friends to play with there. Next day at school, the little princess put her hat and her coat on her peg. and went to play with the other children. Oh, look, she's so excited, straight out. Molly and Polly were skipping. We don't want to play with you, they said. Oh, how kind. When Agnes came along, the little princess smiled. I don't want to play with you, said Agnes. How sad, and the little princess smiled and tried to make a friend. Can I play with you? asked the little princess. No, said Willie, and he went to play with Molly, Polly and Agnes. Do we think they're being kind? I think we know that they're not sand and rock, are they so far? The little princess stood sadly by herself. Then she saw another new girl standing by herself. Nobody will play with me, said the little princess. Nor with me, said the other girl. There were lots of children standing by themselves. Nobody will play with us, said the little princess. Or us, said lots of children. The little princess and all the other children with no friends shared their sweets and fruit. I wish I had a friend, they all said. <gasps> what they don't realise is this is what a good friend looks like, isn't it? Sharing and caring for each other. They all played tag together. It would be more fun if we had some friends, they all said. They haven't realised yet, have they? Even though they're all playing together, they already are friends. In the classroom, all the children with no friends sat together. Some other children with no friends joined in. 
Wow, look what happens when we are kind to one another. Look at all of those children on that table. Don't worry about having no friends, said the little princess to the other new girl. I haven't got any friends either. It's not so bad. It's not so bad, said all the others. At going home time, all the children with no friends helped each other with their coats and hats. That's nice because we know how tricky it can be sometimes to find our things at the end of the day, don't we? And when the little princess put on her hat, Molly, Polly, Agnes and Willie gasped. <gasps> Gosh! She's a princess! The little princess turned to all the other children with no friends. Would you like to come home to tea, she said. Oh gosh, I bet they're really happy that they've made friends with her now, aren't they? Yes, please, they said. Can we come too, said Molly, Polly, Agnes and Willie. The little princess frowned her terrible frown. Oh no, is she going to make a bad choice? Hey, what? <gasps> All right, she said. Come on. Oh, I'm really glad she made that choice. Goodness, said the Queen. Who are all these children? My friends, said the little princess. What a lovely story. So even though she had no friends and even though some of the children were unkind to her at the beginning of the story, she made sure that she wasn't unkind back because remember, two wrongs don't make a right and she made sure that everyone was included in her story, which was beautiful. So today, as a little activity, I would love for you to draw me a picture of you and all of your friends from Sandon, and maybe you could write a sentence about how much you miss them and why you miss them. And I could then share some of those pictures so all of your friends know how much you're missing each other and what makes them special to you. Have a lovely day, and we'll see you tomorrow.